Yeah, aloha, everybody, and welcome back to the Think Tech Hawaii Studios. I'm Andrew, the security guy. Got another exciting episode of Security Matters for you today on your Cinco de Mayo. I hope you're having a great day out there. Uh, Nigel Waterton is with us today from Arculis. Uh, he is the chief revenue officer over there, and uh, we're going to check in with him and his coronation. We're going to talk a little bit about the status of the industry, and we're definitely going to talk a little bit about Arculis today, so stay with us. Uh, Nigel, thanks so much for joining me today, man. How are you doing over there? Doing fantastic, Andrew. Having a great day. It's a beautiful sunny day in the Northwest. Can't complain. Can you see the mountain? I can see the mountain over my shoulder. shoulder. <laughs> uh, I know but, it. But not from my house. <laughs> when it's clear, when it's clear up there and you can see we're near, it's just gorgeous. I love that town on a sunny day. You don't get very many though. I know I know nobody will admit it, but you don't get that many. It's gonna be 80 degrees on Saturday. Wow, that's awesome. Right yeah. on springtime. Yeah. Well, um, you're well known in the industry, Nigel, but go ahead and for any of our viewers who may not know you and know your history, um, why don't you share kind of, a, you know, share what you've been through, your, your, your industry story, if you will, uh, yeah. and bring us up to current times. Uh, came to America 23 years ago after being in the military in the UK. I was in the Royal Navy. Um, I started off in contract manpower, um, not, sure, not too long after I actually got married. And um, I worked for Wells Fargo and Burn Security and uh, did that for about three years as a regional branch manager, ran accounts like Warehouser, a lot of fun. And then a good friend of mine, a guy by the name of Brian Lund, uh, who worked as the, um, I think he was the general manager at RFI, um, called me up and he said, hey, you should, uh, you should come and work from us. And, uh, <clears throat> and I said, um, okay. He said, yeah, because you could talk the ass off of a donkey. And I was like, <laughs> okay. So, I got, I got dragged into sales and um, progressively through, you know, worked at RFI, became, was a general manager at, uh, at uh, Protection One for four years. Uh, then really my, my true career started after learning a lot of different things at ASG, where I spent, you know, probably 10, nearly 11 years of, of my life uh, there. Phenomenal group of people, right up until we were acquired by ADT uh, two and a half years ago. And um, six, six months ago, I joined Arcules as the uh, Chief Revenue Officer. And I just thought this was my opportunity, you know, uh, to give back to an industry that had been really good to me. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've learned a lot. I've done a lot of things wrong. And, you know, that's how you learn. Um, but it was my opportunity to give back and, and help a, a young, uh, aggressive startup company with a, with a really innovative technology. So that's that's what led me to where I am today. And of course, along the road, I met people like yourself and, um, and Christine and Christine, your wife who just, uh, got awarded the woman of the year for the state of Hawaii. So congratulations. Is that something else from the SBA? It's amazing. Thank you. Thanks Thank for that. You. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm so much, so much. I mean, we met, I think when you were already at ASG, so much there with Phil and the whole gang. I mean, what a phenomenal company that was. Amazing company. Great people, great culture, loved every minute of it. Yeah, and so it's, we're definitely going to get into Arcules too in a bit. Um, so let's let's talk about this enforced coronation, man. I mean, what a change, you know? Like we all were ready to go, ready to go to the shows for the year, ready to get our products out there, ready to ready to swap spit as it were. And man, what a shift! How how are you doing? Well, I tell you, you know, our business is actually flourishing because a lot of people are seeing the changes from. Uh, project-based work to RMR-based models. Um, we have been always uh, fairly dynamic and being able to uh, run our business anywhere. You know, that, that's sure. the whole essence of a cloud-based product. So we've enjoyed the coronation, the, the enforced vacation, probably a little differently than, than most um, because we're not installing. And I think we're ideating, we're creating you know, we're working with our end users. We're talking to them on a regular basis about how to address the risks in their business. It has been, it has been fun. Although this is the longest period of time I've had in the last 10, 11 years to actually be at home without, mm. without traveling somewhere. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been kind of nice. So are you going to have another month in Washington state or what's the status? Yeah, the governor is opening up a four phased approach. I think that's what a lot of states are doing. Uh, May 31st should be the, 
the kind of final stay home order in effect. But I think, you know, Washington State, everybody's been pretty smart about this. Uh, we kind of jumped on things early and kind of shut down, you know, the, the, the spread pretty quick. We've, um, I, I think we definitely beat the curve uh, and flattened it very early on. But it's not a question of what we can do here. It's a question of everywhere else. So I think we're all in this, this, um, this, this new normal together. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very fearful for our tourism industry, obviously. You guys have a strong tourism industry there as well. Yeah, well, um, Carnival, Carnival and Holland America have both basically said they sure. won't be any cruises out of Seattle to Alaska this year. And that's a... Wow. I think that they said on the news that was probably about an eighty million dollar impact to local wow. economy. Local wow. business, pretty significant. Wow, that's something else. Yeah. Um, how's the culture around? Um, well, how's the culture around the house? Let's talk about that a little bit. The coronation culture, I call it. You know, the the homebound culture. Um, who goes out for the shopping? Uh, I think we all do. You know, I think oh, it's nice. kind of like I think we're all kind of tag teaming out to. Uh, <laughs> To, get, to go and get out and go and get out of the house um my my wife has put me on a restriction zone around home depot now you know <laughs> because because i've been getting and doing all of the diy projects that i've put off for the last couple of years but i think uh, the, the the general way of things is that um i'm, I'm lucky i've got two grown children both are in college they're both doing their online classes um my wife is is still working she works for the Port of Seattle in a uh, self a, a uh, health and safety risk management um, role there. So we are we're still doing we're still business as usual, you know. Kind of come together at the end of the day, sit down at the dinner table, talk about um, how the day worked. Um, you know, it, it it's just it's just different. Everybody's adjusting. Sure. Have, are you getting any homework requests like um, about math? Uh, no, well, I'd be the last person to ask <laughs> anything, anything other than, you know, plus is minus subtraction and division. Um, no, my, my, uh, my kids would never come to me for that. Although my, my daughter is going through, um, some classes at the moment for, uh, for diving and would query me on questions mm. around that every now and again. Um, my son, no, everybody's, everybody's just been, uh, keeping, and doing their, their own stuff and still uh, surviving and thriving. It's good. Good. You have enough uh, bandwidth there in your house? Or you got, are you guys got Google Fiber to the house or something? I got, I get, well, I got, <laughs> my 21 year old is, uh, is, is currently engaged in computer sciences and network engineering. I'm pretty, pretty much sure he's got everything overclocked in the house. <laughs> Yeah, my, he asked last year, you know, no, two years ago, he said, uh, I said, what do you want for your Christmas present? He goes, I want a rack so I can put my servers in it. I'm like, Ooh, <laughs> I'm like wow. <laughs> nice. Nice. Okay. I see. Uh, very, very uh, forward, uh, forward technology home. Yeah. Um, so what do you think about the culture of business? You know, how's, how's it with Arculus? You guys are, you know, they were, I've been up there, you know, it's an advanced crew. So yeah. I would expect that they kind of took to remote working pretty well, or, or they, you probably already did some of that. Um, yeah. How's, how, what's your take on the, the, the chronication culture of your company today? The, the, the culture of our company is, is not altered whatsoever. I think everybody adjusted to, the normalcy of working from home and you know there's always a fear that you know when you send people to home that they they'll kind of fall back into the position of um being at home so it's again it's it's kind of like a vacation but uh that has been quite the opposite for our uh our team everybody has has leaned in in fact i think yeah i don't think i'm, I'm, I'm wrong here i think the production level has gone up um and and you know i know i do find myself you know on earlier morning calls um you know 7 a.m because i'm talking to either japan or i'm talking to uh, denmark or or somewhere in europe and or working late at night because again we're talking to asia you know um everybody has kind of fallen into a good rhythm here i know everybody wants to get back into the office you know uh, firstly, I think it's because the, um, there's a constantly uh, supplied candy and snack drawer in the office. 
So, um, <laughs> but but I also think it's the dynamics of, of physical human contact that allows that creativity to kind of bounce off on each other, as opposed to you know video to video is fine, uh, but I think it's just a little different when you're when you're face to face with somebody and you're and you're working on a problem. And our teams our teams thrive around collaboration. So I think that's what they're looking forward to. Yeah, that um, that the element that's that I don't know if it's human touch, but it's it's truly a more of a shared experience if you're together in the room, together over a table, together on a problem versus this vir virtually together. You know what I mean? I know what you're saying. Um, so you were telling me a story about some of the um, some of the um, let's just say creative ways you've you guys have decided to stay connected as a team. Uh, talk to us a little bit about that without the uh, no names. <laughs> No, so we, we, we do a couple of things, you know, um, we, we quickly recognize the, you know, again, the dynamics of connectivity when you're actually in an office environment is, 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 is so important because you're literally there, you know, you're, you're talking to people all the time. So we quickly realized that we needed to do very much more community action and drawing people in. And because we've got the medium of, of uh, you know, meetings, uh, you know, whether or not it's social media, Google, Zoom, wh whatever it is. So we do a, um, we do lunch and learns. So we, everybody gets the opportunity to uh, volunteer um, and they come forward and they, they do like a 20 minutes on, this is where I come from. And uh, this was my upbringing. And, you know, oh. these are the things that we, you know, we kind of did as kids. That was, that was fun. One of our employees did our whole thing. They were, they were, born in Kenya and they took us all through how they used to go to the national parks there is really really interesting you know it's not exactly like normal for a North America to go yeah we used to go to this park and there was um you know <laughs> rhinos and lions and cheetahs, <laughs> oh, wow you know um and then we we have a fun thing on Friday afternoons at four o'clock um trying to make it not too late for our east coast folks and we do like a virtual happy hour and uh -huh just a little decompression uh we we play some games people have people have done uh, like little skits like we did the matt foley thing from snl uh you know living in a band down by the river nice. um again people have people have told jokes but but not not work you know just <laughs> just a group of friends coming together you know colleagues or otherwise coming together at the end of a long work week and going, let's just chillax. It's just, uh, you know, let's raise a beer or a glass of wine or whatever your, you know, your libation is and, um, and just kind of say, Hey, how was your week? You know? And I think, um, I think that that dynamic is very important and it's, it's definitely brought our community, uh, and our team, uh, definitely closer together for sure. Do you think if, um, do you think some of those sessions, if they were like recorded, that your clients might enjoy l learning more about the people that, you know, that, that do well, their work? <laughs> I, I don't know about recorded. I don't think anybody would sign off on that. <laughs> we've, we've definitely encouraged, uh, we've, enc well, no, we've encouraged some of our partners who are like, hey, come, come and join us. I, I'll extend the inv invitation to you. Come and join awesome. us, sure. you know, for our virtual happy hour on, on Friday afternoon at 4 p.m. And uh, just relax with us. And again, I think you get to see, I think you just get to see a little bit more of a human dynamic that you wouldn't necessarily get to see if you were in just a straightforward business relationship. I mean, I, I can look at it and go, look, we're all, we're all very gregarious. Gregarious means that we like the company of others, you know? Um, and so there's always a, a, a leaning in on that. Right. And, um, I know that, you know, again, the, our partnership, again, going back over the years, you're a people person too. So I think you would, you would, would enjoy the, uh, the, the, the kind of like, getting to know a little bit more about the people that help you uh, versus somebody at the other end of the, at the other end of the phone, just selling you something. Sure. And that's what I, that's what I think partnerships are all about, you know? Yeah, I have to agree. I, I, I wonder how much or what types of these things may continue even after we don't have to do <laughs> them anymore. Um, it's, we're about halfway through. So let's, um, we'll jump out and pay some bills for about a minute and then we'll be right, right. back with Nigel Waterton. 
Aloha, I'm Keisha King, host of Crossroads in Learning on ThinkTech Hawaii. On Crossroads in Learning, our guest and I discuss all aspects of education here in Hawaii and throughout the country. You can join us for stimulating conversations to enrich, enliven, and educate. We are streamed live on ThinkTech bi-weekly at 4 p.m. on Mondays. Thanks so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. Aloha. Hey, aloha, welcome back to Security Matters. I'm with Nigel Waterton today from Arculis. Nigel, you were giving us some great ideas for how to, uh, how to maybe innovate in this corona culture of ours. Yeah. Um, you also mentioned that you had um, spent some time on the phone, you know, because Arculis is a global company. So you guys are, you're working in Japan and Asia. What's your sense of the industry there and, and, and how they, they've been impacted, sort of maybe compare and contrast it with the U.S. or or some further along? I know that, you know, it might not be a fair question, but yeah. um, what's, your, what's your sense of the global state of the industry? Well, I, I tell you, it's, uh, it's evolving constantly. Uh, you know, Japan and Asia is um, ironically are now beginning to kind of do what America did a month ago, you know? Oh, so, okay. Again, they're beginning to kind of react to the situation you know, I kind of look at like ripples in a pond, you know, this thing is kind of like, you know, spread out, but these ripples are kind of taking on momentum and hitting the shorelines in, in different, in, in a different way with a different intensity, dependent upon the cultural dynamics, the geopolitical dynamics, the, you know, how the, you know, the organizations or the countries communicate to their, their populace. Mm. So, you know, the West is seems to be far more proactive than necessarily than we or we believe than the East. The trouble is the East has done a far better job in, in locking it down, you know, mm. and, you know, people's discipline to, to agreeing that, you know, what the way to control this problem is to self-regulate without the government saying, you will do this and you shouldn't do that. And everybody's looking at going, you know what, we need to stay healthy. So we're going to, you know, act as a community to do these things. As, as it has affected the industry, it's, it's, it's odd, you know, because I spoke to some colleagues in, in Denmark the other day and they said, you know, it's been, it, they feel it's like pretty much been business as normal. And then you go to Germany and they're like, no, no, it's really been affected. Or you go to the UK and they say, eh, you know, everybody's kind of used to it now. You know, I think we're, we're just waiting to emerge from the, um, from the chronication. Mm. Is um, what do you think? Uh, have you heard any rumblings from our manufacturing partners overseas or anything? Is everybody expecting this little bit of a supply chain glitch? Because there were yeah. many manufacturers shut down for a while, not long, I don't think. But, you know, four to six weeks maybe. So maybe so, we'll see a late summer, a late summer glitch or something. I think you have to think about this in a very uh, or you know kind of um, organism, you know you know everything is relied upon the other thing right you know yeah. uh, to to grow collectively so it's you know the, the 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 toe connected to the foot bone connected to the ankle bone connected to the leg bone thigh bone etc um in, it, you know if you thought about supply chain interruption it was like okay production in asia was slowed because they shut the places down okay well the production is now started back up again but guess what they can't ship it because it can't arrive to the port to get offloaded from the port or on or unloaded to the ship to get offloaded at the port to then get distributed throughout the uh, throughout the nation. So there's this kind of compounding effect. And again, mm. you're going to go back to that ripple, you know, of one thing has to kind of, you know, burn its way out to get the other thing to kind of come back in the line. Um, you know, in terms of uh, in terms of supply chain demand. I think the distributors uh, did a really good job in kind of pumping up their stocks uh, beforehand. 
uh, and making sure that they had adequate in place. Uh, because I think once this, once we exit out of the, you know, the coronation, I think um, we're going to see a, a pretty good ski ramp of work. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think it's going to come pretty hard and fast because everybody's going to be looking at going, okay, how do we address the problems in the marketplace with technology? Yeah, there's, it seems like there's always pent up demand and security anyway, right? Because these projects, they always happen. Maybe they, they get delayed a year or two, but they happen, right? So that, I call that pent up demand. It's, we saw it in 08, 09. We saw it in, in 2000. Yeah. I mean, yeah. security industry, people need security. They consume it. Um, so let's, let's get into Arcleats a little bit because um, an, an amazing offering. I mean, right at, at, you know, I would have called it bleeding edge a year ago or a year and a half ago or maybe yeah. two years ago when I first met Andreas and started to see what they were up to more, more from their code base, more because it's just built so specifically to take advantage of what we can do with the cloud infrastructure. Sure. Um, how, how are we doing with them? Um, how are we do with Arcades, first of all? You've been there, I know not, not a, a long time yet, but um, what's yeah. your, what's your, well, how much fun are you having? First of all, let's ask that question. <laughs> I'm, 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 having, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun. You know, this is one of the uh, most fun, challenging, energetic, uh, time-consuming, uh, frustrating jobs I've, I've, I've ever had. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I've got a great team of people that I work with. Um, you know, they're young, they're energetic. They, they create ideas literally on the fly and they turn those ideas into, into something practical in just as much time, you know, um, as I'm definitely one of the older guys in the company next, I think to the, the CTO and the, a couple of others, but um, you know the agility and the youth and the and the brain power that the um, the designers, the engineers, the sales team that they they bring to the equation is so much fun to to. And I don't believe I'm even managing. I'm just kind of guiding and you know caught up in the caught up in the current of uh, of innovation, driving this this excellent product. That again, when you saw it a couple of years ago. It was definitely bleeding edge, and the thing about bleeding edge is you get you get a lot of cuts. You get a lot of cuts along the way, and um, <laughs> and, and and we weren't ready. We really weren't ready uh, that that uh, that time ago. But we've managed in the in the last kind of eighteen months to pick up some significant customers. You know, WeWork is one that we can talk about um, that has uh, has kind of grown up with us. We we joined in the petri dish together and and formed up this this catalyst of uh, how to do things right and wrong. And now we're emerging from being a bleeding edge into a leading edge company. I know that sounds very cliche, but we're definitely in that leading edge now, you know, with WeWork being well over 12,000 some odd cameras in 200 locations, 36 cities, 900 some odd concurrent wow. users. I mean, couldn't get a better proof point than that. Um, yeah. So you can tell by my energy, I'm, I love what I'm doing at the moment. I'm really having a lot of fun working with people inside of our industry and inside of our company to uh, to drive a message of of change. Um, thank thank you. I, I I think the message is is being heard all, around the world now. <laughs> um, is um I, I was a big fan of of hybrid at first when I first you know came across what was happening. I said you know to me this is the 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 way to to sort of skip or help people get into the cloud by, by yeah. offering some hybrid, um, you know, functionality along with the VMS that they had and loved already. Um, what's, um, what's going on with development on the hybrid side? And then what, uh, what, what do we have to look forward to the next, um, next uh, six months? Yeah. You know, we've, uh, so we developed a hybrid solution with uh, obviously another Canon sister company uh, in Milestone. And um, yeah, we did that in a seamless fashion that the Arcules gateway uh, can be seen and um, inside of the X Protect environment. This just was, this made sense. As you said, it was that skipping stone into um, that first entree for uh, customers to, to leverage what they had. You know, don't reinvent the wheel, you know, I, you know, kind of look to see what you've got today and, um, lost my light. Go ahead. And, and, and make it work. And then, you know, that, um, that, uh, that hybridization, um, is, is obviously then taking us to then some of the next logical steps inside of our business practice by being able to, you know, develop solutions for customers. We're never going to be 100% solve 
for every customer's problem. It was never designed to be that. Sure. You know, it's probably going to be about 90%. And that's when we think about our, um, when we think about our creation and what we're developing for the next six months, it's against that timeline and that, that product demand that, that customers are asking for. So there's a, uh, a, an Arcules cloud managed uh, version, which basically says we can manipulate the, uh, the bandwidth that is used. So in, in low bandwidth situations, we where the software is, is going to be able to capable of managing the, the cameras that are there. We already accept nearly 3000 models of cameras today. Wow. Analytics being poured into the, uh, into the product features. We've got great analytics today, but we're going to continue to invest in that. Again, we're going to do it by consultation with our customers to ask them, what is it they need and why do they need it? That's well, and the customer is the only one that we always cared about, right? Their, their use cases vary, and in the different vertical markets, they yeah. vary. And so that I think, I think that cloud, and it, to your point about analytics and development, right, it leverages all that power that's sitting there available for your development and your, the, the ideation crew that you have there to yeah. just create a solution almost on the fly and test it. Hey, how does this work for you? How does that work for you? And it, it just becomes another feature set that everyone else that could use it can license. And as I, I think I told you before, the crazy thing is the technology is updated three times a week, three times a week. You know? <laughs> and it's like, what? And it's not like breaking and fixing things. It's literally updated three times a week. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. And it's that's done an, automatically. Yeah. That's unprecedented in the industry. Right. Yeah. I mean, as far as I know now, I don't pretend to know every product in the industry, but yeah. that, I'm that development seen. cycle is amazing. Yeah. I've never seen it. <laughs> well, what, um, we got a few minutes left. What, uh, what do you expect to roll out in, um, in the, in the, with Arculis over the, over this year? When you, if we get a chance to go out and roll it out, I don't know. It may be a virtual rollout. Yeah, no, it'll definitely be the, uh, the Arculis cloud manage, which is the okay. bandwidth, uh, management. You know, where, as I said, you know, with the fact that we're doing things three times a week, we're constantly rolling out, you know, a version one of a feature, and then it'll be a version 1.1 or 2.0. And, and again, it, it comes from asking our customers, you know, what is it you need and why do you need it? And ranking those, those asks, we get some crazy ideas and we're like, okay, that sounds really interesting take us through the rationale of that. And we're like, okay, then you have to kind of do a, uh, you know, do a, a technical review to go, okay, how much time can I, this actually take me? Is it two weeks or three weeks or is it six months? So um, we're, again, we're constantly evolving that and some things shift up and down on the scale. So there's some levers that we, as we change things, but um, you know, the, the, the most definitive thing is that, is that we're constantly learning from the marketplace we're constantly learning from our clients from our prospects from experts like yourself and saying hey we should we should kind of tweak our direction a little bit that way now you know or maybe we've got to come back to this way so um wow. I, lo I love that that has got to be a lot of fun Nigel. i really appreciate you sharing with us today um you know a little bit of home a little bit of office a little bit of fun a little bit of industry perspective yeah. uh, all in one guy thank you so much again for being here uh, aloha thank you andrew that was great. Aloha, brother. Love that shirt, too. You take care of yourself. And everybody else out there, wash your hands. It's Cinco de Mayo. Aloha. Cinco de Mayo, baby. Absolutely.